Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm glad to greet you in the matchless, powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Well, we have made it to Wednesday. Wednesday is what's called Hump Day. We're halfway through the week, and we certainly thank God for that. Let me just wait for some of you to come on. Good to see you, Brother Russell, Sister Jacqueline Wallace, Sister Denham. Valerie, how are you? Jerome Williams, thank you for coming on. Joan, how are you? I hope all is well in Georgia. Leroy, good to see you. Let's talk after this. Stella, how are you? Well, let me go ahead and get started. We praise God for this day. We are halfway through the week. As I think I shared with you on yesterday, the church now will be part of phase two. I'm not sure, I haven't been given a date as to when phase two will begin, but my guess is that perhaps it will happen somewhere around the middle of July. So just keep your ears tuned because I don't know about you, but I'm ready to gather together in God's sanctuary. On Friday, on Friday, I hope that if you are available, that you will join us. We'll be distributing masks to the community on this Friday from the hours of 1 to 3. We'll be using the parking lot. So if you'd like to come and get a mask or you need masks for family, um, you can join us and meet us there. We will also have voter registration material and other important um, information for you. We are working with Ranice Bachette's office in concert with them. I challenge them to the end that they come to get our vote, but they have not been responsive to our needs as a community. Consequently, they offered this opportunity, and so we're going to make that happen. So please join us on this Friday um, between the hours of 1 to 3 o'clock. Of course, if you can come a little bit earlier to help us get set up, that would be wonderful. If you can come about noon, that would be wonderful. I'd look to see you. Of course, we are moving forward. The weather is wonderful outside, so I still encourage you to get outside, but just make sure that we follow all of the CDC regulations and the regulations that are coming down from the governor's office that we continue to do what I call physical distancing and that we continue to wear the mask when we're in the company of too many people and less than six feet. So we certainly wanna do that. We are working diligently now to prepare to open the church so that all the proper protocols will be in place. I have put together a committee. We'll be meeting next week to finalize many of the things that we need to do. We can't wait for the church to open and then decide how we're gonna fix it, or how we're gonna be prepared. We have to do that now. And so I wanna thank you, Salem, for just being the wonderful, wonderful people that you are. Please meet me tonight at seven o'clock. Bible study will be at seven o'clock tonight. I've been invited to join William Tate, who um, sponsors Brooklyn 45, and he wants to have a conversation around the social unrest in our city and in our community. And I've been invited to be his special guest at 8.30. So we'll start Bible study at seven o'clock. So please meet me tonight at seven o'clock. Well, let's go to the word. I do have a word for us today. And I want to read out of First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 16, verses one through nine. First Corinthians, chapter 16, verses 1 through 9, and I'm reading out of the New International Version of the Bible. And the Bible reads as follows. Now about the collection for God's people. Do what I told the Galatians churches to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with his income saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Then when I arrive, I will give you letters of introduction to the men you approve and send them with your gift to Jerusalem. If it seems advisable for me to go also, they will accompany me. After I go through Macedonia, I will come to you, for I'll be going through Macedonia Perhaps I will stay with you a while and even spend the winter 
so that you can help me on my journey wherever I go. I do not want to see you now and make only a passing visit. I hope to spend some time with you if the, Lord's, if the Lord permits. But I will stay on at Ephesus until Pentecost because a great door for effective work has opened to me and there are many who oppose me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So Paul is writing, first of all, to the Corinthians church to encourage them to make sure that they set aside an offering so that they can take care of the work of the church. And when Paul is writing this, there's also a lot of poverty, a lot of challenges that are taking place in Jerusalem. And he wants to make sure that the church is responsible in a tangible way. And so he says, so there won't be any scrambling, any challenges, you know, please set aside a sum of money in keeping with your means. God blesses us to be a blessing to somebody else. Let me take this opportunity to thank those of you who support the church with your tithes and your offerings. I want you to know that I look at the entire list um, for those of you who give online, and I pray over every name. I read every letter that comes in with your offerings. And as often as I can, I try to send you a letter to just express to you my deep appreciation for your support of the church. I know that it is a sacrifice, certainly in these pandemic moments when people have lost their jobs, when there's a lot of challenges, and you yourself have your own concerns and financial challenges. I am totally aware of that. And so the fact that you would support the church in this moment, I am so grateful. But it's also commanded by God. And I can tell you this, you can't bless, you can't beat God's giving no matter how you try. For those of you who have not been given and you'd like to, I can tell you that you will be sowing some seed in some fertile ground where we're really trying to share God's love in a tangible way. There's so much now that we will have to do as we prepare to reopen the church. And so your continued support certainly is necessary. And so Paul says, as I move hastily on, he says, um, I have to go to Macedonia. Apparently there were some challenges at the church in Macedonia. So Paul says, I'm, I'm going to stop there and make a passing visit. And he says, but I'm going to stay on at Ephesus uh, because, here it is, he says, because a great door of opportunity is open to us. And NIV says, and there are many who oppose, oppose us. The King James says, a great door of opportunity is open to us and there are many adversaries. I want to say to you that in this moment that we find ourselves in this city, in this country, in this world, that there's a great door of opportunity that's open to us. And there is much opposition. You ask, what is the opposition? We see it on display very, very clearly. We have racism, white supremacy, voter suppression. Look at what happened in Georgia. Why would they bring brand new voting machines that no one knows how to operate in the middle of a pandemic when we have those kind of challenges, knowing that voting is so very, very important. And so there's an effort to suppress our vote. I can't encourage you enough to make sure that you fill out the absentee ballot application so that you can get your absentee ballot and vote. Maybe a little late now for the primary, but you still need to get your absentee ballot application so you can get your absentee ballot so that we can vote. They're expecting us not to vote. Then we have other opposition, unemployment. So many persons have lost their jobs, um, certainly in this pandemic moment. And we know because of the number of persons who have lost their lives as a result of COVID-19, that there's health care disparity and there's poor housing. And so we are faced with much opposition and much adversarial situations here. Paul says, there's a great door of opportunity, however, but there are many adversaries. So that's the opposition and there's even more. However, this is a great time for Opportunity Church. I believe that this is the finest hour for the church. This is the time that we can actually do church. Church is not about the building, but church is about the people who meet in the building. Wherever you are right now, you are the church. When 
I go to the fish market, to the supermarket. The church is there. That's why Jesus says, let your light so shine that men and women might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. This is a great opportunity. There's an opportunity for police reform. Um, I'm not so much in favor of defunding the police department, but there has to be reform. There has to be change. There has to be transformation. They have to be more respectful to us because they serve the community. They're not supposed to impose their will and abuse the community, but they're supposed to help lift up the community. This is the opportunity for more unity, for us to see God's divinity in all humanity. I thought that Reverend Al Sharpton did a beautiful job at George Floyd's um, homegoing service, final service on yesterday, when he talked about the fact that, and I'm going to be speaking about that on Sunday because I'm talking about how great our God is, but he said that God breathed into man in Genesis and man became a living soul. So that breath is a gift of God and no one has the right to take your breath away. No wonder David said in Psalm 150, let everyone and everything that have breath praise the Lord. This is the time that we can really fight for better health care, fight for more job opportunities, fight to be a better church. And I believe when we come together, we'll just have more love for one another. And so Paul says, um, I, I got to go through Macedonia, but I'm going to stay on at Ephesus. He said, I don't want to come to you now and just make a passing visit. He says, but when I get to you, I want to spend some time with you. I want to spend the winter with you. And so when we do come back to church, we want to get this thing right. We don't want to come just for a passing moment, but we want to be able to gather together in God's house and really have fellowship with one another. And we can sing with a fellowship, with a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. This is a good verse to remember. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, Paul says, that a great door of opportunity is open to us and there are many adversaries. Whatever you're going through, I want you to know that it might be oppositional, but in the midst of the opposition, there is an opportunity. Because as I conclude, Philippians 4.13, we can do, watch this now, as my friend J.G. McCann would say, all things through Christ who strengthens us. Not just some things, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I like to end like this. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men and women what God has in store for those of us who love him. If you love the Lord, just say amen or type amen in there so I can see it. Say amen, pastor. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for this time, Together, we give you thanks, and we thank you for your word that's so pregnant with truth that it gives birth as we yet try to understand it. Thank you for continuously looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Now, God, I pray for each person that's in the sound of my voice that thought it not robbery to tune in for these moments of study of your word and for prayer. You know the needs and the concern that they have. Meet them at the point of their need. Where there's sickness, we pray that you'll be a doctor. Where there's confusion, we pray that you'll be a peace. Where there is lack, we pray that you'll be Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. We pray, oh God, for peace in our community, for peace in this nation. We even pray for the president of these yet to be United States, that you'll take out of him a stony heart and give him a heart of flesh. We continue to ask for protection for our central workers. And we pray, oh God, that you'll keep all of us together in the bond of love and peace and unity. And while we're not physically together, help us to know that we're bound together because of your love and because of your grace and because of your mercy. We thank you now. We praise you. We honor you and we give you glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much for this time together. I've got some things to do. I should have put the, the, my, my phone on, the, on do not disturb. Someone's trying to call me, but they'll just have to wait. have some things to do to get ready for this evening and also for tomorrow as we prepare for worship for Sunday. And so I'll see you tonight. Let's receive the benediction. 
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance, grant you his peace and his love, and you're going in and you're going out, you're down sitting, you're uprising, till we shall stand in his presence through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Good to see all of you. Good to see you, Gabrielle. Good to see you, Wanda, Tanya, Gloria. James, thank you so much. Show boat right. I hope you're feeling better. I've been praying for you. Sister Warman, good to see you. God bless you, and I'll see you this evening at 7 o'clock.